no one talks about this. Clint Eastwood talking to the chair uh, in 2012 at the Republican National Convention. Do you remember this? Yes. So insane. For those of you who don't remember, Clint Eastwood just brought up a chair and pretended Osama bin Laden was in it and then kept referring back to him. And it's the weirdest. It's one of the weirdest things that's ever happened in American politics. And this is American politics. You know what else was discussed in that election? The killing of Osama bin Laden, which we will bring. We come back to our original topic. Now, Dylan, you don't remember where you were. You just heard the John Cena video. I was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It was announced before the dark comedy show you we were doing. And one guy stood up and went, fuck yeah. And they kept the news on the entire time during the show. And the only person who addressed it was the other comedian I was with, Mark Walker, who I believe did a George W. Bush impression, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's that was the I mean, uh, that was the Laden same dying. I remember was one of the first things where people were like, I'm not buying it. I want to see oh. the body. And I was like, I don't think they're going to be like, here's a fucking dead body on the news. I said the same thing when a bunch of people are like, I want to see the body. And I'm like. You didn't see any of the bodies during 9-11. Do you think those people lived? And then some of them were like, yes. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we're now we're in real trouble. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like, no, yeah. Just I, I believe I don't unless I see it. Also, if I see it, then I'll think it's a dummy. Like it's just like Yeah, this is by the way. It's like I don't I won't believe it until I see Obama drink it out of his skull on the news. I'm like, I don't think that'll Yeah. Happen. Osama bin Laden's not dead until I get to fuck the body. What did you just say? I said I want to fuck his body. Um, Glenn Wool had the best joke about Osama bin Laden's uh, death, which was they would have uh, put him in a grave, but by the time he got to land, he had been desecrated. Like, you don't think that the Navy SEALs weren't weekend and burning him around the deck? It's the best joke. So fucking funny. But I, that's what I think happened is, like, they were like, we'll put him somewhere. And then the Navy SEALs are literally drawing, like, bitch on his forehead and they were like oh shit all right well, they huck him in the sea if the if hollywood has taught me anything chris pratt killed him in front of his family yeah if I, oh my god zero dark 30 my i had an old i had a first generation ipad that eventually broke and it only had two movies on it one of which was zero dark 30 and the other one was layer cake and what I would do is I'd always be like, oh, I'll take that on a flight. And then I'd always get open it. And I'd only remember once the flight had to, oh, fuck, there's only two movies on this. So I've watched Zero Dark Thirty so many times. That's such a weird movie to watch all the time. Yes. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess this, this, this is really attacking Bin Laden's killing and making it like more of a human story. And really it, nuanced anyway. Yeah, I watch that all the time. I just like to I just like it when his family's there. I do not like I don't like I do not it's also by the way, I don't really like that movie, but you know it's just one of those situations where it's like I guess I'll fucking watch this. Or it'd be on a fucking train journey in the fucking UK. And it's like, all right, I just want to watch something. All right, let's watch this fucking ginger chase this fucking fuck. Well, I mean, that's one of those things where it's like I always think it's like if your favorite movie should be kind of fun. Like yeah. if someone's like, I like Schindler's List, I'd be like, yeah, Schindler's List is a well-made movie. If someone was like, my favorite movie is Schindler's List, I'm like, watch well, the yeah, fuck. I don't out. want to be alone with you very much. What is your favorite movie? Mine's Wayne's World. The The Departed, buddy. I'm a Scorsese bro. Yeah, I could see that. It's pretty good. I remember people hated The Departed when it came out. People were like, it's, it's the worst movie ever. And then I remember watching it and being like, you, ha why do you? What is it? What's to hate about this? I if also like The Wolf of Wall Street too. The Wolf of Wall Street might be better because everyone's fine at the end, and it's got a better message where it's like, yeah, these rich guys uh, do whatever they want. Yeah, I, I like the Wolf of Wall Street's message, which is like, listen, if you're charming, that's the same as not committing crimes. Um, I fucking yeah, I hate. Mean, yeah, I, I mean, I all what was it? There's that. I hate the Wolf of Wall Street of, like, quite. The movies to look out for if you. Your day, like the whole DVD thing, where it's like the movies to look out for if, if this guy's a douche, and it's like every single one of them is movies that I would have a DVD of. <laughs> yeah, except me for too. Fight Club. I never the Fight Club thing. I was like, okay, I I liked it. I got it. Like I understood the message of it. Like it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I know the people that like Fight Club's one of those movies. It's it's a movie you should it should be in your top. It can be in your top twenty. Shouldn't be your favorite movie. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't be going. I fucking love Fight Club, dude. Yeah, it's it's one of those movies. Oh, that's good, but then people are like I fucking love. Fight yeah, Club. like all right, well, 
I don't love Wolf of Wall Street. And part of the reason was I read his book before I uh, I watched the movie. And when you read his book, because it's it is Jordan Belfort, you can really tell that he doesn't have any remorse. Like it's like written like literally like, can you believe I did this? That's cool, right? Oh, but I got caught. That's bad. But no one else is better than being bad. What I did, which is cool. Like it's just, <laughs> you're like, and he sucks. Like Jordan Belfort sucks. Like he has to live in Australia because of like the weird machinations of how he can open and operate companies. Like he's of course has has Jordan Belfort be recently featured in a Coffeezilla sting. Of course he has. Like well, he's he one of those people you catch him and then you you caught him. He's like you caught me this time. It's like a fucking Batman villain. Where yeah. I'll just come back with a new weird scam because all these things like, yeah, you catch me, but I still have enough money from the scams to get good lawyers that will get me out in two years. And then I get to do another scam. This is going to be great. What's just so funny is it's like it's just what he's so clearly just a high level, uh, high level sociopathic narcissist who's just like, I charm them just enough to then get what I want. In the same way that Sam Bankman fried and Jordan Belfort are cut from the same cloth. I, by the way, just uh, murdered that Michael Lewis SBF book where, by the way. Uh, spoiler alert for that book Michael Lewis kind of on SBF side and it's so it's literally reading the book of reading a baby boomer getting charmed by a narcissistic sociopath and that's kind of how I feel about Wolf of Wall Street too which is like Martin Scorsese's like man if I had known Jordan Belfort in the 90s I could have been cooler like it's just like shut <laughs> up Marty you well, it's also kind of impossible to make a movie about these assholes without kind of glorifying them because and just like, don't make the movie tell the story of how they got away with it really which also, but make the movie from the cops' perspective. I mean, you know what I mean. There's another way to do it that isn't so just sort of like, isn't it cool that he fucked over these poor people? Yeah. And I know I'm being a, I'm being a fucking, I'm being a bit of a Karen, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's just one of those things. Right? Just that one in particular. That particular type of douche always fucking gets me. And his book is just so fucking irritating. Because his book does the same thing as the movie. He's like, not going to tell a story so dirty. I'm not even going to tell you. And you're like, you just told me you shit in a woman's pussy. Like what? What? You didn't do it. You're just trying to fucking build mystique. You fuck. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to talk about these guys without glorifying them. If you told it from the like the the cops perspective, then you just have Donnie Brasco. Where it's going to be like, yeah, it's fucking this guy. His family doesn't get along with him. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask yeah. you this question. Is there anything wrong with every movie? If every movie was Donnie Brasco, I'm fine with it. Donnie Brasco has everything you need. Fun, weird dialogue. A fucking lion for no reason. Michael Madsen. Sex on a staircase. What else do you want? <laughs> I just well, I just read a book about uh, Hagler Hearns and Tommy Hearns bought a cougar and then got coked up and was like, I'm as quick as a cat. And his fucking entourage was like, you are. And then he started flicking jabs at the at the cougar. No. What happened, John? Cougar attacked the fuck out of fucking Hagler Hearns. Cougar just fucking, yeah. Thomas Hearns got his fucking hand bit. But here's the thing where I'm like, fuck, maybe he is built different and fighters are built different. What did he do? What would If I got my hand caught in a cougar's mouth, I'd be screaming going, ah! Um, what did he do? He just Punch started the choking the cougar. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> you imagine you're just like, I'll fucking choke you. <laughs> okay. Thousand you. pound muscle thing. Let me tell you this story. This comes from a comedian named Trevor Crook, who you've never met, but you would fucking love Dylan. And he was a mm. like a seventies a and eighties karate guy in Australia. And uh we were talking, he's from Adelaide, and we were talking, he was like, Oh, you know, once I was at a barbecue and this guy, he uh kept a kept a roo. So we kept a kangaroo in a cage in his backyard, and he used to get pissed and torment it. And this guy was a real cunt, and I don't like people keeping animals in cages. So one day we all convinced him to get in there and uh, fight the kangaroo. And we told him only a man would, uh, but uh, he said only a real man would lock himself in there with a kangaroo. And he locked the door, dropped the keys out. We took the keys, threw them in a bush, and the kangaroo kicked the kicked the snot out of that cunt is what i remember him saying it was very funny i was like when did you get him out and he was like kangaroo went to sleep and then we opened the door <laughs> i was like what the you let him that guy's not, let dead? The... not dead <laughs> somehow wow, he's tough i mean australians are like canadians where you're like how did he die heart disease what and you're like yeah you'd think the snowmobile inferno would have done it but as it turns out you don't need your first two layers of skin if all you do is drink rye in the morning <laughs> yeah, I guess Australia is just warm Canada, but also it is. like 
you can't give uh, people too much money and too much space. This is that that's exactly why Australia and Canada are the same is it's like there is it's too easy in Canada to get a place get to a place where there are no neighbors. So the consequences are, well, I'll be out of here before the cops arrive. Let's put the all these Roman candles on this donkey and then uh, race it with me on a bicycle also covered in the same amount of Roman candles. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's always funny how those guys complain about immigrants where it's like, you know, you mean oh my immigrants God, of course. that are a 15 minute drive away from you because your neighbor is the wilderness. Yeah, I like also like it's like all oh, these fucking people coming in with our fucking ta- the amount of people I know that were vandals until their early 30s that complain about immigrants now is so funny <laughs> to me. Like <laughs> vandalizing things in your 30s is so funny. It's like he used to be like, ah, just fucking do everything. And like vandalizing thing in your thirties is like things aren't going well. I'm gonna take it out on George's fence. I guarantee there is a fucking baseball diamond in McKellar Park that was hit by the fence of the baseball diamond, which is in the middle of the park for over a decade. At some point during the spring thaw, someone would drive into the park and hit it with a car. That's fucking cool, though. Like, I mean, but that's that's the behavior of gentlemen not in their teens. You know what I mean? Or there's a tradition amongst the teenagers. A tr- oh, a tradition amongst the teens. I mean, for uh, what we try to do is get drunk and dig a hole in the middle of the football field. But <laughs> fucking great. With too much, too much organization, we were like, I don't know. It seems like, but well, we just found it funny of like, <laughs> is there a twenty five foot hole in the football field? But then it's like you get drunk, you break ground, and you're like, this this would be seven hours of work. Yeah. It's, or you just need to be real fucking fun drunks, take it too far, find a backhoe, hotwire yeah, it. Backhoe. You're right. You got to get a full backhoe. But get then it's backhoe. like the neighbors would be alerted when you drove a backhoe onto school property. Would they, though? We went to very different schools. Like Nepean High School in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I could really tell the, the the houses around that were always just like, what in the name of Christ? Also, did your high school have a smoking section? Because mine did. That's yes. the thing. Yeah, of course. This is the craziest thing about Canada. Nowhere else had a high school had a smoking sections. It's only Canada. Hey, man, free man on the land. So wait a minute. Only Canada had that? I have asked Americans, and they're like, no, you, you can't smoke on school property as a student. I'm like, well, then where are you supposed to smoke? And they're like, you were a child. And I'm like, you guys are fucking.